Welcome to the section on corrective measures. We shall look at the speech transformer in this paper entitled A No Recurrence Sequence to Sequence Model for Speech Recognition by Lin Hao Dong, Xuang Zhu, and Bo Zhu. Recurrent sequence to sequence models using encoder decoder architectures have made such great progress in speech recognition tasks. However, they suffer from the drawback of slow training speed because the internal recurrence limits the training parallelization. In this paper, we present the speech transformer, a no recurrence sequence to sequence model entirely relying on attention mechanisms to learn the positional dependencies which can be trained faster with more efficiency. They also propose a 2D attention mechanism which can generally attend to the time and the frequency axis of the two-dimensional speech inputs, thus providing more expressive representation for the speech transformer. Evaluated on the Wall Street Journal Speech Recognition Dataset, the best model achieves competitive word error rate of 10.9% while the whole training process only takes 1.2 days on one GPU, significantly faster than the published results of recurrent sequence to sequence models. In this paper, the others successfully introduced this transformer to automated speech recognition task and that's why it's termed the speech transformer. Now let's look at the model description. Similarly to previous sequence to sequence models, the speech transformer is based on the encoder decoder architecture where we have the encoder transforms a speech feature sequence like this to a hidden representation H. And given H, the decoder generates an output Y, one character at a time. At each step, the decoder consumes the previous emitted characters as additional inputs when emitting the next character. So if we look at this, for example, right here, we'll see how we actually have this shifted output right here. So we take in the shifted outputs and then the outputs from the encoder like this and pass it into the decoder to obtain our output. The transformer we have here is quite similar to the transformer model we've seen already. Although we have some additional models and also some changes in position like with this layer normalization where in the layer normalization comes before the attention whereas with the standard transformer model this layer normalization comes in after so with this we have the layer normalization right here we notice that it comes before year before year before and year before also we take in those inputs which are our spectrograms and they go through this conv layers the convolutional networks exploit the structure locality of spectrograms and mitigate the land mismatch by striding a long time. The input spectrogram is then passed through a stack of two 3x3 CNN layers with stride 2 for both time and frequency dimensions to prevent the GPU memory overflow. Now, suppose we have an input, say, batch size as in here we have an input of dimension batch size by time dimension by frequency dimension so you could have a batch size of one the time dimension say 1738 frequency dimension 129 so if we have such input and we are passing this directly into this encoder right here at the level of the attention layers we shall have uh, 1738 by 1738 matrix which is too large and so one of the reasons why we have this conf layers here is such that with the aid of the stride we are able to reduce the time dimension such that we have a smaller or we work with a smaller matrix in the attention layers also note that another option will be to use the LSH attention instead of the usual attention which was presented in this paper then optionally the additional models could be added right here and then after this additional models a linear transformation is performed on the flattened feature map output 
to obtain the vector of dimension z model. So with a linear transformation, we are ensure that it gives us an output vector of dimension z model. Now, this happens to be the input encoding. So this is the input of our encoder right here after this linear layer. Then after this, we also include the positional encoding as with a classical transformer. So we fit that in so that we are able to attain based on the relative positions of our inputs. And then for the rest of the model, we have our classical transformer model. In addition to what has been presented already, the others included this 2D attention mechanism. So the serial attention mechanism used in the encoded block of the speech transformer relates positions and time axis. That's normal because right from this position right here, what we get right here is of dimension or this tensors of dimension by size, by time axis, by frequency axis. And this also means that the attention is done with respect to the time axis. And the others call this a 1D attention. That's a classical attention. However, speech feature sequences often transform to two dimensional spectrograms, as we've seen already, with both the time and the frequency axis. When reading a spectrogram, a human predicts its pronunciation relying on the varying correlations between different frequencies with time. Therefore, attending to both time and frequency axis may be beneficial to the modeling of the temporal and the spectral dynamics in a spectrogram. Motivated by the analysis above, the others propose a 2D attention block which is illustrated in this figure 3 right here. So what goes on here is, once we have the inputs, we pass them through three separate conf layers, then for each of this query key value triplet, we obtain the query transpose so this is a query right here this is his transpose this this is the key this is his transpose this is a value and this is his transpose now suppose we have the query key and value we have the scale dot product attention which is basically this block right here which we've seen already this also represents the attention to time and it's kind of like the classical attention we've been working with so far now we also obtain the query transpose, key transpose, value transpose. So we use this and this other attention right here. So this is the attention to frequency which takes in the query transpose, the key transpose, and the value transpose. Now once we have this, we get this output which we transpose and then concatenate with this from the attention to time or the time scale dot product attention. Looking dimension wise, if we have this input right here with dimension by size, by sequence length, by the model size, that's D. Now, after passing through these three conf layers, we have the BLD again, that's we have this same dimensions. Then note that since this is a query, for example, with dimension BLD, then the query transpose should be of dimension BDL since we transpose this to positions right here. And this is done for the key and also for the query. So now we have the BLDs and the BDLs. The BLDs, that is the actual input we had after getting going through the conf layers, is passed through the scaled dot product attention, this which is the attention to time. So this is the attention we used to have in already. So basically we just pass this through this. And then the BDLs, that's the attention, that's those inputs which are gonna be passed into this model, this attention model, which is the attention to frequency have been transposed. So we have the BDLs and then as you could see right here, this is what we get now once we have this you see notice this transpose that we have right here so that's how we obtain this uh that's how we pass this into this and then we obtain this output bdl so now we have the outputs from this attention which is bld and then this output from this other attention which is bdl 
again to match up with the original BLD we retranspose this BDL to obtain BLD right here and then we concatenate this two upon concatenation on the last axis we have BLD prime and then we pass this through a conf layer to ensure that we have this D right here this model size in this last dimension and so that's how we obtain this output from this input right here right here we have the experimental setups we have the results you can see here that we have this model which is termed the base model made of six encoders and six decoders with a model size of 1024 which produces a word error rate of 12.2 now once we increase the number of encoders as to 12 and then with six decoders we have this smallest error rate of 10.92 so comparatively this big model has the best or has the lowest word error rate compared to other models we see that the big model also has the smallest word error rate while also noting that the training time is far less than that of these other models where yeah we just take 1.2 days on one GPU to converge the model whereas this other models or uh, this specific model right here took five days on 10 GPUs looking at the code we have this self attention for the encoder which is different from this self attention model which we built already now the self attention takes into consideration uh to the attention model where we start with this query key value we get them from this we pass them through those three conf layers which we've defined right here the conf query conf key and then the conf value so once we have this query key value we now obtain the query transpose the key transpose and the value transpose by just using this transpose operator right here now once we get this, we obtain the score for the query key and then the score for the frequency attention. So we're kind of like doing the two attentions side by side. So there's a score for the normal attention or the 1D attention. And then this is the score for the frequency or this is the score for the time. And then this is the score for the frequency. So that's what we have. We have query transpose and key transpose. Then this now we normalize our score right here using the keys mod the keys dimension and then we have this for the causal masking then the case where we want to implement pattern masking we have to pass in the sequence now if there is uh, no sequence we don't have to implement it but if there's a sequence then we have the pattern masking and if we have a causal attention then we have to set this look ahead masking to true now this is mostly done in the decoder so that's it for this pad now we have this alignment we have the alignment tool for the frequency now we have the head which is alignment by the value we have the head frequency which is also alignment frequency by its value transpose now notice now that we have the head with the transpose of this head frequency right here so that's it we now concatenate this tool and then we pass them through this conf layer right here where we make sure that the output is this model size so we ensure that if we have this model size like here we have a model size of 20 as we've defined the self attention encoder right here we ensure that after we should have that same shape so we we'll run this and there we go now if we modify this you see we would have this see take this and that's it now in this case is actually 20 so that's it then from here we we'll move to the multi-head attention for the multi-head attention we just specify whether we're working with an encoder attention or a decoder attention uh by default is set to false now if we have the encoder attention set to true notice that here we we'll specify we're working with the self attention encoder which is basically this attention we've seen where we have the time and the frequency attention which is this we just defined whereas in the case where we aren't working with the encoder attention that's if we were in the decoder then we'll just use this simple attention 
so that's it we have now this and then we we'll specify that we want the encoder attention from this right here then going to the encoder layer we see that the encoder attention is set to true we have the positional embeddings then the encoder right here notice that we don't put the additional or the optional model so we just have this two conf layers right here so after passing through the two conf layers we have the dense layer and then we have this usual encoder layer stacks so we could test that simply then we have the decoder layer similar to what we've seen already where we pass the sequence to ensure that we do the pattern mask and then we have the look ahead mask or the causal mask set to true whereas this is set to false then we have the decoder layer which is made by stacking up the different decoder layers so that's it then we have the transformer which is basically this although before passing this input into our encoder we have this normalization layer right here so that's it we take our, our decoder takes in the pre outputs and then the outputs of the encoder so we have this transformer we could run it like this and see exactly the kind of model we're having so there we go we have this model with over 2 million parameters and for now we want our model to be quite small so we just have one layer or we just have for each decoder and encoder we just have one decoder layer and one encoder layer also given the fact that our uh, new model structure is quite different from the previous one like for example in this transformer model we have two inputs and one output whereas with the previous one we just had one input and one output so we are going to now have to modify the way we prepare our data so right here we have this exactly what we had previously a level of this get spec is quite the same we have the same thing right here now with the vocabulary since we shall be doing some patterns we'll make sure our pad this pad right here comes to the zero position in our vocabulary so that when doing patterns it's quite easy to match it up with this now note that we don't necessarily need to fix a given element or say for example the pad to the last position in our vocabulary since we're not using the ctc loss here and also we include this start token since we have a pre output which takes on a start token so we have the start token and then we've exchanged the positions of the pad and the space so that's it we run this then we now get into this get vocabulary we have that we get into the get level actually now note that we have the pre level or the pre output and then we have the output itself so basically we have this 31 because start token to 31 at, at position 31 so we have this start token then plus we now add the rest and then we take this out level which is practically just this one right here so once we have that, notice that we have to, have to subtract one from this so they might have the same dimensions. So we run this, get level, so that's it. We have the start token, we have all this. And then we just basically from this, we start from this 20 to the end, so that's it. Then we level the data generator, we also make it take into consideration the fact that we have two inputs. So right here, we get the pre-level, the level, we output the X the pre y and on the y then once we get this here we now have the in one in two that's x and pre y and then we have the output y so that's it we we'll specify the train pad the by size of four so that's just fine we now get back to our transformer which we've already constructed right here then get into the training optimization we have this fixed learning rate you could always define a custom learning rate scheduling model such that we could modify the learning rate as you're training but for now we just have this the optimizers add them we compile the model and then we actually now train it so that's it run this while it's training there's this specification we like to make right here at the level of this decoder note that after getting to the decoder now we have this dense layer which was specified in the paper so that's it right here and then we have the 
soft max layer which comes out of the dense layer so we just have this activation equals soft max right here to solve that so that's why in this we just have to put uh, from logits to be false because we already have a soft max layer so we we'll take that off simply after training for several epochs we have the following results you can see how our loss drops well then after about a thousand epochs we start having really low loss values like this now going into testing we have this transcribe function which is quite similar to the translate function we had in the machine translation wherein we have this input right here so we have this spectrogram and then we have this pre-out now note that this is taking this value 31 because in our vocabulary the start token occupies this position so that's it and then we just repeat like we just redo what we've seen already we pad then we pass through the model we get the position the height position and then we modify this input to or the pre output right here we take the output at the particular position or the particular height position and then we repass this input into our model again that's actually doing the teacher forcing and then we get the output so once we have the output we now go through our the final output we put it in this words list and then we return this words list now as a string so that's it so we could run this run this it actually takes a while because we are not going through the model just once we pass through the model several times so that's it we have this output which compared to the exact value see it's the same we could have different values and there we go we have exactly the same so we've overfitted our data on a small part of our data set and then you could now train all this or you could train a model on the whole data set and you should obtain reasonable outputs after training